potential Roy Rogers. Potential hot hand chicken outlets. We are on the road. This is the OMG Hour on the road back to Canada. Returns. We're, uh, we're looking for the hot hand chicken. We, uh, we have to have hot hand chicken. That's it's our, it's that's a staple. Return meal. It's, it's a return st- meal now. We've got to go and get some at some point, somewhere along this road. So, fourth day, Pax East is done. We, uh, we're driving home. Welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us on the road. Yes. Yeah, we're going to do a couple of what, little segment things as we invest. We're going to talk we about the stuff we saw occasionally throughout the day as we drive home on this eight hour trip home. 6.30 left. 6 hours, 30 minutes left. Tico, what did you see today that you really liked? Uh, what did I see today that I really liked? Um, well, we stopped by the, the Dela booth today. Yes. I, I enjoyed That's really close to my face. I'm concentrating on the road, so now it's throwing me off. Um, so, yeah, we saw a few things at the Dela the Dalek booth that were uh, kind of cool. Um, what did they have there? Uh, Witchet was there. Which By is, the way, it's raining. It's raining. So that's a lot. That's what you're hearing. It's raining out there. See? Yeah. So. Yeah, the state of Massachusetts is sad we're leaving, so it's decided just to do this. Um, they had Witchet uh, that, uh, out there, which we played in the past, but it is coming out to consoles, which I was excited to see that because that was a fun game. That was a fun game. Yeah, we talked about Witchet last year. Uh, that was one of our favorites, I think. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there was another one. Um, <sighs> suicide. Um, suicide. Uh, yeah, I can't remember the name though. We didn't. Um, somebody. I, it Aaron would, Smith. You're talking about the games we didn't actually play. Why are you doing that? I don't know. Uh, we're ta- I saw it. I was excited. You wanted to know which ones I was. I liked. I liked. You're talking about games we didn't actually play though. Well, I can talk about them. I got the. I mean, we played Witchet last year. We got the. You played the suicide. The suicide of I don't know, like Karen Draper or something. It, it looks like a. It looks like a. It's a story, story based adventure, um, kind of like a. Edith Finch. The Edith Finch style game, you know. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. All, I really enjoy all those games. games that have somebody's full name in them are exactly the same. Exactly type of game. the same thing. If right? they have a full name, you know what type of game you're getting into. Yeah. What did you see, Sean? What did you like? Well, today? now you got me on the spot, and I can't think. We didn't write anything down because we're on we're the road. We're driving. We're driving. We're on we're the driving. road. Um, all right. Well, let's talk about like, let's go in order. We stopped and played struggling, and we struggled with it. No, we did. It was a game called Struggling. You were this creature, basically a face. It's like it's two faces distorted, mashed together with, with two arms. Yeah. And Tico played one arm, I played the other arm, and you had to basically work together to climb. Yeah. Or, and it was really, really difficult. It did, did not, not play well didn't at control all. Well, the concept very similar to Manual Samuel, which we played uh, a few years back, which we both liked. This one here, we both knew it. it. Just it didn't, it didn't feel cohesive. It didn't work well. No, no, not at all. We struggled with it literally. It was a struggle, and it was a really, really difficult. But the, the developer actually said that's the point. Well, and and all I can say is, the, great. The, the point of your game is to get us to rage quit it. Fine work. Your well, your game is a success. Yes. Then because I yeah I won't I can't play a game like yeah. that. Plus you have to have two people to play. You have to. Yes. There is no other way to play it. Otherwise you drag yourself with one arm all the way along. Yeah. So what do we move? We moved over just to the right of that next uh, to the Rebellion booth. Right, Sniper Elite Three on the Switch. Yes. Uh, looks, plays great. It looks like I'm playing on the because that was a, that would have been a Xbox 360 game. Um, it looks I, I fantastic it on, the well. on the Switch. Yeah. It plays really well. But I find when you're playing on the Switch itself, it's sometimes really difficult to see the enemies in the distance because they're so, small screen, so, so, so small. But you, I mean, with the Switch, you can play on the TV. So, yeah. Um, there's that. I like the idea of being able to play that on, on the go. I also tried out they had uh, the Sniper um, Elite V2 uh, remaster there. Um, so I tried that for a couple of minutes and uh, looks pretty nice. I uh, enjoyed playing that. And the one that you got excited about too, which we couldn't play obviously, and, uh, but he was he 
mentioned that uh, the VR. Sniper VR. Sniper, yeah. They're doing a Sniper Elite VR uh, on P- and it's going to be on PlayStation that it's, and it's going to use the PlayStation AIM controller. And I cannot think of a better use for that controller than a Sniper game. That's going to be amazing. I am really looking forward to that. Yeah, that one there. I would like to come over to your house and try that on VR. No. Then I will just get a real Sniper. We got some hot hand chicken. We eat dish it continues. But we've eaten it. You were not there. Yeah. Uh, we didn't we decided that was a private moment between private, us. Private listen. A man must eat his chicken in private. What that's that just does not sound right. No. No, no. Let's, let's not go there. Let's move on, shall we? Okay. The suicide of Rachel Foster. That is the game from today like we saw earlier, not yes. the suicide of whatever name we gave you earlier. Okay, so there. Yes. Look for that one. That is the story-based game along the lines of like an Edith Finch narrative. Um, another game we saw at the Day Lake that we really liked is this one down here at the bottom of the poster called... You can't see that, can you? There we go. Felix the Reaper. Felix the Reaper. That was a fun game. It is a puzzle a little platform puzzler. Yes, you play as Felix. You play as Felix, who is a reaper, you know, Sweet. like the reap, the reaper of death, and he is tasked with setting up the death of one person uh, per chapter, I guess, which yeah. takes place over several levels per chapter. Puzzle-based meaning he can only move in the shadows, so he has he has the ability to change the direction of the sun that will change where the shadows lie on the level and you can only move in the shadows. And you have to set up over the course of several levels the death of a a single person that basically looks like a natural or accidental death or whatever. It sounds fun. It's cute. Um, Felix likes to dance around the level. He's a bit of a dancer like Saturday Night Fever. Yeah. It's a a fun game. It's cute. It's got a very... Uh, cute, uh, unique main character in Felix, um, and uh, the puzzle aspects of it seem uh, quite entertaining. It's due out this year sometime. All the Dedalic games, they all they could tell us was they will be out in 2019. Um, so, uh, I think only a couple had actual dates on them, but we don't have full dates on, on most of the games. So look for Felix the Reaper later this year sometime. That was one of our favorites. Uh, a couple more board games we saw today, tabletop games. Yes. Uh, both of them are actually deck. There was a lot of deck builder games there. That seems to be like a different variations of deck building. There is a trend going on with deck building. So the first one we saw was Epic. And Epic is by the creators of Star Realms, White Wizard Games. And I kind of, I kind of view it as a... It's like Magic the Gathering with a little bit simpler rules. Um, It is along the same lines, though. You draw cards. Uh, It's not a collectible game. It's not a collectible like Magic. It's it is still, but you can build decks through like booster packs. No, uh, No. draft. Draft. You basically you put the decks together that you have, and then each person you you pick up five and you draft the cards until each person has thirty. And, but it's not a collectible card game. You have all the cards in, in your yeah, hands. So the, the interesting thing about this one here is the, the way the mana or resource pool is. But, uh, each player gets one um, gold to spend each turn. The cost of each monster or, or attacker or whatever you want to call them is either one or zero. So on your turn, you can play that one and that's that's it. You don't. It doesn't go up. You don't get two. You can't bank it. You get one. So you play one or zero, and that's it. That carry that that uh, creature is in play for you. And then your opponent also gets during your turn one to play certain types of cards that can be used to counteract your actions as well. 
Right. So it, you don't you like like Tico said, no mana pool like there is in Magic. So it is a simpler version of a Magic style game. Um, it was fun. Um, I definitely like it because I won. Barely. I won by a lot. That's because he used. was at like negative twelve, you and I was at twenty two. Ridiculous. Or twenty three. Wolf card. Or twenty four. That was like super cheating. 18 wolves on one card. That makes no sense to me. 26 wolves come out because you sneezed at the board. No, not acceptable. Yep, that's exactly why. I killed him with a pack of wolves. It was like a, it was like he, I, I had one character on the board. Yeah. He had, and I summoned four wolves, and they had bonuses on them because of another card. So they were attacking for... They were 4-4... Four, four, I attacked him for 6-6 six, six because of bonuses added to them, and there were four wolves, so I was basically attacking him for 24 in one shot. I, I managed to block three of them. Two. No, no, three. I Two. Three. Three. You did not block three of them, my friend. I ducked on one of them you weren't looking. You blocked one successfully Two. and took 18 damage, which puts you at like negative 12. I, yeah, I only had seven to start with. Yeah, so. exactly. So I won. Deal with we'll it. We'll call it a tie. <laughs> we'll call it. Either way, I did actually enjoy the game. I like the concept of these deck builders um, or these. these and you've never been into Magic. I have never been into Magic, I, but I do like deck building. Uh, I'm a big fan of the DC deck building. Um, we actually played the Hero Realms from them uh, the, the day before. Um, I, I, I actually really enjoy that type of game, and so maybe I would like Magic. Who knows? You probably would like I, Magic. I probably would. So, um, but there's a lot more involved in Magic because you have to build. You actually build your deck. You, that, and that, you have. You can buy starter decks that are already built, ready yeah, to go. Yeah, and that's the that's the that's the you know the, the point of Magic that I don't like, and that's what I like about this is I'm buying a box. I have everything I need to compete. Yeah, and you can do that with Magic now, too. You can, you can buy you can. a box ready to go. So here's it. My son is huge into this. He goes and he plays tournaments for Magic, and he, he's actually won money, and he, he's actually probably... I don't know if he's really good. He's okay enough at it that I know he'd kick my butt. So I got into Magic, and then I played him in Magic. He'd bring well, some, like... You come play with me, then, because we'd be pretty equal. Okay, because he'd bring some fancy deck that he's like, oh, well, I'm just going to use this deck. And it's like, you know, two cards in, and, you know, somehow I died. I don't know. I don't... That's that's the scary part of it for me. I like these ones where you buy the box and it has all of the decks and everything ready to go. Okay. Uh, okay, for one final one. Another deck builder. It's yes. just hitting Kickstarter now and it is called Widget Ridge. Uh, the difference with this deck builder... This is like your, your like sort of your Dominion deck builder. Or, you know, where uh, you're not really battling each other. You're building uh, machines, I guess. Uh, so you have cards that you can find and purchase that fit together based on different elements. There's three different elements that could possibly be down the side of the card, okay. and you can lay. You, there's middle, there's left cards, middle cards, and end cards, right? Or start, middle, and end. Yeah. Once you attach all three, and they can they attach through symbols on the side of the card, it then triggers another ability that ha that triggers every turn after you manage to build this you're widget. building a machine you're building a machine keeps running the yeah. idea is to gain a spark as their currency right uh, 50 spark and means you are the winner right 50 I think he said in a normal game you'd play to like a hundred yeah so right. uh, yeah so a hundred we played to play to 50 so the machine generates a spark so if you create the machine and basically flick the switch on this machine by creating it it does something it, for you it every does turn. Every time, and so unless you're the only thing your opponent can do is stop you because there's no attacking each other. Yeah, but there are some cards that allow you to destroy. Just destroy or, an augmentation. Um, yeah, or, or yeah. So you need to basically toss, uh, you know, something into the which into breaks the it then breaks the to machine. break the machine to stop them from generating that. That's that right. Every time, uh, which you did not do. And again, uh, I enjoyed the game mostly because I won. Yes, I now I could by have, a large I chose, margin. I chose not to. I don't know why I was being nice you, to you, but I you, chose. You like, made a mistake, my friend. I did. I'm like, like I have. You say, oh, you can use that card to destroy this thing. I'm like, well, I am. I'm gonna choose not to do that, and I decided See, to be nice. My one. machine that I built had the wonderful, the wonderful ability that if I get rid of a card from my hand, 
I can then trash a card from the row, the mar what they call the market, which is where you buy the cards from. I can trash a card from the market and gain that much spark. And there were cards eights, eights on sevens. there. There were eights yeah. and sevens. So I just I trashed a seven, gained eight spark, and you know I did that like two turns in a row. Yeah, but and Tico just... had no chance. None. I None. really, I absolutely had nothing I could do at that point. I had some machines that were about to come out. But so that just, was not a tie then? That one there, I'm going to call that one a second tie. So we're going to go with two ties on right. the day. So when Tika wins, he wins uh, outright. Yeah, absolutely. When I win, it's a tie. At See best. how that works? At best. Yes. At best. So check that out on Kickstarter if you like deck builders uh, with a twist. A little bit of a steampunk theme steampunk, going on yeah, there. I think it's called uh, Widget Ridge a Steampunk Widget Deck Widget Ridge, a steampunk deck building game. It is on Kickstarter now. They they were already funded. He said he was funded in a day or something. Eight hours. Eight hours. Which is a work day. So yeah, you know, I wasn't completely wrong. We'll call it a time. It's. it's It's the OMG hour after dark. Our during, final during dark. During during it's, dark. It's, well, just, it's, it's just, after it's gotten dark. But it's still dark, so it's so it's dark. it's uh, the OMG hour we'll after call, it's gotten we'll call it dark. A time. <laughs> we'll call it a time. We are uh, two three hours to home. Three hours to home. Almost uh, like 171 kilometers from the Canada. From the Canadian, the Can Canadia borders. Yeah, so we're, we're so but surely making our way home. Final thoughts of PAX East 2019, my tenth year there. A lot has changed over the years. Uh, I was there at the beginning of PAX East for the very first one, and uh, back then there was a lot of big, you know, AAA developers, and now it's uh, very much an indie showcase. Uh, so the, the and that really that really is. An indication of where I think the gaming landscape has gone. I mean, indie developers are everywhere now, and it's amazing that way. And and PAX really showcases how how the landscape of gaming has changed. Not only that, but PAX East is so much more uh, board gaming, uh, tabletop gaming than ever before. I I don't even think there was tabletop vendors or developers at the first one. It's really bleeding. It's bleeding a lot into the main section as well. It's moving uh, yeah. up further and further. I mean, we, the one of our games of the show was like halfway, halfway down the yeah. Like, so the fi aisle. Fire Tower was not in the tabletop area at all. It was actually they had their own booth in and amongst all the video uh, game developers. So yeah. I still had a good time. Uh, I am. I'm going to be honest. Tenth year. I'm really tired. You know. I, 10 years older than when I started this, I don't have the energy for that kind of a thing, especially now that it's four days long. It's a lot, a lot of time, a lot of walking, a lot of standing on your feet on a concrete floor. Uh, I am sore. I am tired. Um, it, it is a long day. Uh, you know, we're not sleeping on regular beds either. We're on cots, and I, I slept on a hammock for four days. Yeah. Um, so my back is a little It, it, it does, it does, it, it takes a toll on you. Um, fun time, but, you know, end of that uh, thing, I think you need, you need a lot of rest and recuperation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, that's uh, that's PAX East 2019. We were, I'm glad we went, uh, but I'm honestly, at this point, I think I'm going to call it for uh, PAX East. Uh, that'll, uh, you know, 10 is a good round number. And uh, if I'm going to call it quits on such a thing, uh, this is this is the time to do it. I mean, not calling it quits on gaming by any means. It's just you know, this particular convention. Maybe on the fives, maybe fifteen. Back <laughs> fifteen, we'll, we'll maybe. reconsider. We'll those. see. We'll see. But uh, I think at this point, it's no, it's not going to be an annual thing for me anymore. There's other things I want to do that happen at the same time. But that's my own personal thing. Maybe Tico will go next year. Who knows? Who knows what will happen? But. Appreciate you tuning in. Uh, 
tune in to our regular show Friday nights here on uh, youtube.com slash OMG Nexus. We'll uh, do a bit of a bit more talk about what we saw, anything else that uh, we didn't talk about in these day in reviews. But thanks for joining us. This has been day four of PAX East 2019. This is the OMG During Dark. I don't know. All right, sounds, yours sounds better. Go ahead. Go ahead. Use yours. It's the OMG Hour After Dark, my friends. After Dark. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you Friday night during our regular show, everyone. Let's turn out the lights. Bye, guys. <laughs> This has been an omgnexus.com production.